Hi everybody, this is our 10th grade bridge law lesson from the counseling office. Um, at the end, there will be some information for students to be able to follow along at home to complete uh, the bridge law tasks that are required for all 10th graders. Um, but I will note when that changes. And so the beginning has a lot of really good information for all of our grade levels to know. Starting off with some of that information is who your counselor is. So we are divided by last name. So all of us work with all of our grade levels. Um, if your last name starts with A through D, A, you have me, Ms. Ponticelli. If your last names are D, E through J, I, you have Ms. Hawk. Last names J, O through O, you have Ms. Jordan. P through R, E is Ms. Hansen. And R, I through Z is Dr. White. Dr. White is also our dual enrollment coordinator. She will assist with the paperwork process of dual enrollment should your student choose to go through that route. Some reasons why you might come and see us um, is for academic support so we can talk through what classes you're interested in taking, what classes you need for graduation, um, you know, what classes you might want to take in order to prepare yourself for the desired college that you want to go to. Um, also career support. So, you know, you have an idea of what type of job you want to do. Does that job require a four-year degree, a two-year degree? Will you actually need to go on and get a master's? Or is it something where you can go straight to work and maybe do an apprenticeship program? All of those are things that we can look through together um, and kind of talk through to make sure that you're creating the best path. And then personal. So if you're having a really bad day and you feel like you just need to talk to somebody, but you can't focus in class without getting something off your chest and just needing to talk through something, you are always welcome to come to your counselor. Um, there is no appointment necessary, although students are able to make appointments through the counseling department. If you need to come speak with us, just ask your teacher for a pass and you can come down and as long as we are available, we will see you right then. Otherwise, we will help either get you to another counselor or have you set up an appointment for later that day. What you say with us stays with us for most of the time. So we do have confidentiality here in the counseling office. However, if you come and speak about us with something where you are um, a threat to yourself or to others, um, or if somebody is harming you, then those would be some safety concerns that we would need to get administration or your parents involved. So we would need to get some other people on the case with us so that we can make sure that all of our students here in the school are safe and that everybody is being treated the way that they need to be treated. So these are the things that we're going to talk about today. Graduation requirements, creating your transcript, Georgia Futures, testing, dual enrollment, and Naviance. Graduation requirements are always very important. This is something that we cover with you every single year. So you should hopefully know what these are by now if you were with us last year. But your graduation requirements are the same. You need 23 total credits to graduate. Of those 23 credits, you need four English credits. Two of them must be ninth lit and American lit. You will also need four math credits. If you take foundations of algebra, that will count towards graduation, but it will not count towards a college admissions math requirement. If you are looking to attend a four-year college after high school, you will need a math beyond advanced algebra, which used to be known as algebra two. So please remember, Foundations of Algebra will meet the graduation requirements, but it will not meet college admissions requirements. You will need four sciences before you graduate. Biology, physics, and chemistry or environmental science are the ones that we offer here in the building. You will also have a fourth science option, which gets to be something kind of fun. Uh, we do have currently astronomy, forensics, um, anatomy, zoology, anything like that gets to be your fourth science option. For social studies, everybody will take world history, U.S. history, and economics and government. Our economics and government class is taught in one block, unless you are taking AP. 
If you are not taking AP, then you will take economics in the first half of the semester. You will take government the second half of the semester. So it only takes up one block in your schedule. That is the same for health and personal fitness. Every student needs to take health and personal fitness by name. This is not weightlifting. This is not team sports, but this is only a one block class. So it is one thing in your schedule. The three credits of career tech, fine arts, and foreign language are very important for our students. This basically means that our county really values having a well-rounded education and they want to make sure that our students are being exposed to some electives that aren't just team sports or weightlifting or, um, you know, just kind of The three credits of career tech, fine arts, and foreign language are important for Cobb County because it shows that we do value a well-rounded education. They want to make sure that our students are exposed to some other options in their elective choices. This does not mean that they need to have one of each. It does mean that they just need three credits of any of them. They take three levels of band that qualifies for these three credits. The rest are general electives, which can be whatever class the student wants. The career tech, fine arts, and foreign language does not mean that a student needs world language to graduate high school. But students who are interested in going to a four-year college directly out of high school will need to have two levels of the same world language in order to meet a college admissions requirement. So much like that math from earlier, the two levels of foreign language are a college admissions requirement, not a high school graduation requirement. Promotion requirements are tied to graduation requirements, but they are a little different. Uh, basically, this just means that these are the classes that you must pass in order to be promoted to your next grade level. So for our students who are in 10th grade, if they would like to be promoted to their 11th grade here and become a junior, they need a minimum of 10 credits, which should not be a problem. If they have passed everything that they've taken, they will have 16 when they finish this school year. So you must have a total of 10. Of those 10, you must have two English classes, two math classes, and two science classes. If you have the 10 credits and you do not have those two classes in each of those subjects, you will not be promoted to your next grade level. So that is something that is very important. If your student does not pass one of these classes that they have in the fall semester, then please reach out to your counselor so that we can talk about what options your student has for making up that class, either through a credit recovery course or through summer school. So all of your students did receive a copy of their transcript while they were in our lesson with us. Hopefully they brought that home and showed it to you as well. Uh, but just so that you guys are all aware of what's on a transcript, the personal information of each student is on there. So it has their name, it has your address, um, it has their birthday. So please, when you get a transcript, make sure that you are keeping track of that transcript. That is yours and yours alone. You do not need to be sharing it with other people. It does have your cumulative GPA. So a cumulative GPA is every single class that has been taken in high school, all of those grades are taken together and create the grade point average. Um, there are two GPAs listed on the Cobb County transcript. One is a weighted GPA. So if your student takes an AP course or an honors course, there is extra weighting involved. In an AP course, a student gets an extra one quality point. So if they make an A in that class, instead of a 4.0 being averaged into their GPA, it goes in as a 5.0. And then for honors classes is an extra 0.5. So if they make an A in the class, instead of the 4.0 going in, it's a 4.5 going in. There's also an unweighted GPA. Unweighted just means that it takes out all of that extra weighting. So it is capped at a 4.0. You cannot have a higher unweighted GPA than a 4.0. It will also list the credits earned and credits attempted. Now there may be some discrepancies with that. If your student uh, did take a class in middle school, that means that they earned a credit, um, but that credit does not go into their GPA. 
So it will show in the credits earned. Um, so it might create a little bit of a difference in the earned and attempted section. Um, also, if a student does not pass a class, then they would have that credit attempted, but not earned. Your student's attendance information is also listed on the transcript. So please remember if your student misses a significant amount of days, that will be listed on the transcript and could become a determining factor when they are applying to college. If your student has any EOC scores, which at this point, EOCs have come back after we had um, a brief hiatus from COVID. So all of your students, when they take an EOC class, such as algebra, uh, will have an EOC score listed on their transcript as well. So when your student brings this home, um, you can have them look over this with you and do the scavenger hunt, just making sure that they know where everything is located on the transcript. So there is the HOPE scholarship and the HOPE grant information that we want our students to keep track of. This is something that, again, we cover with them every year. Um, but the HOPE scholarship is a great opportunity for our students in the state of Georgia to earn a significant amount of money to attend college in the state of Georgia. You must be a U.S. citizen or meet the non-U.S. citizen requirements. You must be a Georgia resident for at least one year. Um, the four rigor classes is a really big thing for our students to make sure that they're keeping track of. If your student is with us, um, we pretty much build these into their schedule. So taking a second world language and above counts as a, uh, one of the four, taking chemistry and physics. Um, every AP class counts as a rigor course. So there are tons of options here available at Sprayberry for them to take but they need a minimum of four. This is tracked in Georgia Futures, so we can help you guys kind of locate that if you have any questions about it. Uh, and the biggest thing is you also must have a minimum of a 3.0 HOPE GPA upon graduation to qualify for the HOPE scholarship. We do not calculate the HOPE GPA. The HOPE GPA is not listed on the Cobb County transcript. You can only find the HOPE GPA on Georgia Futures. So please make sure that your student creates a GA Futures account and links their account by using their social security number. If you do not have a social security number on file with Cobb County, then you will probably see an error message when you go on Georgia Futures. Please make sure that if you see that error message that you bring in a copy um, of that social security number so that we can update it for your student. This is super important to do before their senior year, before they graduate. That way they can be eligible for the HOPE scholarship. The HOPE grant has slightly different requirements. They don't have that GPA minimum, um, but it is used specifically at technical colleges. So your student can use the HOPE scholarship at a technical college as well. Um, but if your student does not meet these requirements, the HOPE grant is a great way to still get money from the state of Georgia to attend school while they help, help bring up their college GPA so that they can become eligible for the HOPE scholarship. Like I said, the um, only way to see this information with your HOPE GPA and the rigor courses is on gafutures.org. So please create an account. You will see this information for the My High School HOPE GPA and it will be already calculated for you. What are the SAT and ACT and why are they important? We want our kids to start thinking about this now in their 10th grade year because we do encourage them to start probably taking the SAT and ACT in their junior year once they have completed advanced algebra. So the SAT and ACT are standardized tests that colleges use to determine how prepared students are for their, you know, institution. Um, more and more our colleges are becoming test optional, but that requires that you have a certain GPA. So there is a chance that your student might not need to take the SAT or the ACT for college admissions. However, they might still wanna take it because it can qualify them for different scholarship opportunities, both from the college and then from um, like third party systems. So other opportunities that are available to them. Also, there's a lot of questions about the Hope Scholarship and the Zell Miller Scholarship. 
you will still want to make sure that you're taking the SAT or the ACT in case anything happens by the time you graduate, where the Zell Miller Scholarship does have the testing requirements again in place. Currently, they do not, but that will vary from year to year. So by the time our sophomores are graduating, it could be required again for a test um, minimum. So please make sure that you are keeping track of this information. You will register for the SAT and the ACT on their respective websites. The SAT is on College Board. The ACT is ACT.org. Please make sure that you are keeping in mind if you will need to do an SAT or an ACT or any sort of the standardized tests for college admissions. If your student is interested in dual enrollment, um, there are some specific things that they will need to complete. So we do require our students to have American Lit and Advanced Algebra completed prior to the dual enrollment semester. Um, so they can enroll and begin the process um, for dual enrollment as long as they are in those classes or obviously have previously completed them. Uh, but if they are trying to do dual enrollment and are not in those classes and have not taken them before, then they will need to meet those uh, prerequisites first. If you go to sprayberrycounseling.com, we have a whole dual enrollment tab that has a video that explains some information about dual enrollment. Um, it also links you guys to the college websites and all of the paperwork that is required for dual enrollment. Some things to consider before beginning this process is will the college that you're interested in accept these credits? So if you are interested in going out of state, sometimes they do not accept these transfer credits from the state of Georgia. If you are saying in state, more than likely they will be able to transfer to whatever school you're going to. Um, but that is something that you need to consider. Also, would it be better for you to do dual enrollment? or an AP course. If you are looking to apply to a highly selective college like UGA or Georgia Tech, they're going to want to see AP courses over dual enrollment courses. Please make sure that you have exhausted every course in the building before attempting a dual enrollment course if you are trying to attend one of those colleges after high school. You do have an option of full-time versus part-time. So you can go full-time to college for dual enrollment where you don't even come to Sprayberry at all, or you can do part-time where you have a couple of classes here in Sprayberry's campus, and then the rest of them um, will be at college. But that would require that you have your own transportation. So there is no bus that will take you from Sprayberry to the college. You will need to be able to have transportation to whatever classes you have. There also could be scheduling conflicts between college level classes and the timing of spray grade courses. So if there's something that you're really, really wanting to take here at school, then just remember that you might not have that opportunity with dual enrollment if you're going to prioritize that course. So at this time, this information will now be information for our students to complete some activities for us in Naviance. So it's very important. Um, but it does, we have covered all the information for our students that was pertinent to the meeting that we had. So in Naviance, our students are able to do college and career planning. They can actually email us if they wanted to or message with us. Um, they can do scholarship searches, college searches, um, and then there's also some resume building tools there as well. Today, uh, on the day of our meeting, our students updated their email completed the Strengths Explorer assessment, and also completed a dual enrollment survey. This is how you can access Naviance at school. You will automatically be logged in if you are logged into a computer. This is how you can access Naviance from home. When you're in Naviance, this is what the homepage looks like. It has been kind of revamped this year, which is awesome. Um, this spot over here where it talks about selecting a path um, is a new feature. So our students are able to select a path um, that will help give them some more specialized instruction about them. So some of the paths are a two-year college or a four-year college, or if you're interested in enlisting in the military is one of the paths as well. So please make sure that you're going in there and thinking. 
this is the example of all of the pathways that our students can choose from. This is how you update your email. So if you go to my account, you will click the pencil button that says edit and you will change this to a personal email account that we can, you know, actually email you to. Uh, the default is that it is your Cobb County student email account, uh, which only receives other emails from Cobb County email addresses. So if you want to receive any of our updates through Naviance, please make sure that you are changing that so it can receive emails. These are the two other tasks that our students needed to complete. Um, the task from my school is a box on the front page on the right hand side. You will see both of these assigned to them. Um, if you click the words, so for example, click the words that say complete Strengths Explorer, it will then open to a page where you can see this. At the end of this arrow, you click the words that say complete the Strengths Explorer assessment. That will help have you actually begin the assignment. Once you've finished it, uh, you will see a page like this where you can say see related career pathways um, and it will show you your top themes. If you are really taking the time to answer these questions well, it will give you really good feedback and like help you think about some paths of careers that match what your interests are and what your strengths are. So if you answer the questions well and put in some thought into it, you can get some really good information out of it. It will then show you when you click that to related career pathways, um, all these different job options. And so if you click into them, you can then see even more job options that are under that umbrella pathway. So if you save those, they will be saved under my favorite careers and clusters and you can go back to that information anytime. The second activity that you need to complete is the 10th grade dual enrollment survey. This is a one question survey. Um, it asks if you learned about dual enrollment during our presentation, which you did. So you will click yes. Um, again, you click the words that say 10th grade dual enrollment survey, and then you click the words here that say take this survey. Once you've completed that, you've done everything that we need to do um, per the county policy and the state law. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your counselors um, or schedule a meeting with us and we are happy to go over anything else in more detail or help you um, answer any questions that you might have. Thank you.